the question begs, why is it in 2024 there's still the gold standard? There are other platforms out there that I love. I love Tatsoft's frameworks. I love Litmus. I love the combination of the Canary Labs historian with Flow Software. But the question begs, why is it inductive automation is still the gold standard? Take zero. All right, so I get this question a lot. In fact, I'm answering this question because a couple of different community members reached out to me and asked me a question about, you know, why, why should I use Ignition or why should I start with Ignition in my proof of concept? And why is it the best IoT platform in your opinion? All right. So while Ignition is not the only IoT platform, um, in my opinion, it's still the best out there. And here's why. First off, what is an IoT platform? An IoT, an IIoT platform is a platform who can do the connect, collect, store, analyze, and visualize of your digital infrastructure, okay? So an IIoT platform gives you the ability to connect, collect, store, analyze, and visualize your data. The one additional element that it has is an IIoT platform can also do data ops, all right? So Ignition qualifies as an IoT platform, and I would argue that it, it's really like the first IIoT platform because it was wholly open. Um, in order to answer the question for why Inductive, why Ignition is the premier IoT platform, we have to go back to why it was created in the first place. Steve Heckman owned an integrator in the 90s and the early 2000s. Actually, he owned the integrator, I think, all the way up until the 2010s before he finally divested. Steve Heckman, who's the founder of Inductive Automation, he was tired of the players in the, in the industry. Rockwell Automation, Wonderwear, Intolution, Schneider, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Their business practices. Uh, licensing costs were too high. They would nickel and dime you. They would, you know, they they would control their regional markets. You know, they operated like the mafia, and it's been a problem in our industry for decades. I mean, it's something that's always frustrated me, frustrates everybody, anybody in this industry. Anyway, Heckman was sick of the way these companies operated, and so he said, "You know what? I'm going to build my own platform." And the and he had a, a series of basic pillars, you know, that it was going to be open, it was going to be cross-platform, it was going to be easy to use, drag and drop. And to that end, he had he had this idea. There's actually an original sketch of the original platform, like on graph paper, where he was going to build a platform that would be a SCADA platform, but it would basically it would be all SQL in the back end. So the definition of a tag would be a SQL, there'd be a table for definitions of tags. There would be a table that contained all the current values of the tags. There'd be a table that would contain all the history. And also there'd be a table that contained all the history of a tag being edited. And that was the tag TE table. So the back end would all be SQL. It would be fully open so you could like query it and everything. That original platform was called Factory PMI. And that was like 2002, 2003. That was developed by two guys out of UC Davis, Colby Clegg and Carl Gold, who were hired like out of school to build this platform. Those two guys are still with Inductive Automation, and they're both officers in the company now, and Colby Clegg is the current chief executive officer at Inductive Automation. In fact, many of the original people who were hired out of UC Davis, guys like Travis Cox and many others in the organization, are still with Inductive Automation. And the principles upon which Steve Heckman started the company and designed the platform, those principles still apply. Those core values, the mission of the company, they all still apply. And so inductive automation hasn't been corrupted over time from what that original vision was. Number two, Steve Heckman was ab absolutely adamant that you would be able to download the software from their website for free without having to talk to anybody. And you could install it in three minutes and, you could, and at its base level it would be drag and drop and you could get started right away. He, later on, he decided the training would be free. We would offer free training online through Inductive University and get credentialed for free. All zero touch. 
third concept was inductive automation's target market was the system integrator. So they, they relied on the system integrator to be the people who sold the platform, okay? So this is long before they ever had premier integrators or anything. They just, they built a platform that integrators wanted to use because it was easy. It was low barrier to entry. It was open. Um, it was just an easy platform to work with, okay? All of those rules still apply to this day. But the platform's only gotten better. If you look at from 2002 to 2008, when it was factory PMI and it got rebranded as Ignition in 2008. In 2008, it was really like a standalone SCADA platform. It had, I when I started working with inductive automation, it was in 2008. And I really didn't jump in with both feet until 2012. But from 2008 and to 2012, it was really a rapid application development environment for SCADA applications, primarily because they didn't support user-defined data types or templates. There was no enterprise features in Ignition. Everything changed in 2012 when they came out with UDTs and templates. Um, the, the precursor to the EAM was the Gateway Area Network, which came out in 2012, and then the MQTT modules in 2014 from Cirruslink. And by 2014, Ignition was a IIoT platform enterprise class, a platform for solving problems where you could connect, collect, store, analyze, and visualize any type of data into any type of visualization, and you could make it accessible to other elements inside your ecosystem. And to this day, it is still one of the most cost-effective platforms on the market. It is still the gold standard in terms of being able to deploy short time to value, and it is an easy platform to teach people how to use and support. And here, here's another important thing. Inductive automation was the originator of the land and expand model. Inductive automation made it very easy for people to know when it was they needed to buy a license. So they, you've always been able to download Ignition without talking to somebody, learn how to use it, build something with it, then you could go to people and go, do you want this? And you didn't need to buy a license until when? When two hours was no longer enough. I could use the license, the, the application in perpetuity, two hours at a time, and then have to reset the license and then use it again. When do I need to buy the license? It was very clear. I mean, a monkey could, could uh, figure it out. When two hours is no longer long enough, then I got to buy my license. Inductive automation was the originator of that land and expand model. And guess what? Not a lot of people do that, even to this day. And you have to ask the question, why? Why don't people do that? Why don't they have the two-hour resettable license? And the answer is, is because they want to gatekeep the solution you're building because they're afraid that if, you, if you're left to your own devices, you'll do it wrong and you'll blame their platform for it. Inductive automation was never worried about that. They've never been worried about that. In fact, they've always been so confident that you are going to be able to build something of value, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't make it easier for you to download it if they wanted to. Like they just, the idea was, we just got to get it in people's hands and they'll build awesome shit, right? And, you know, the question begs, why is it in 2024 they're still the gold standard? There are other platforms out there that I love. I love Tatsoft's Frameworks. I love Litmus. I love the combination of the Canary Labs historian with, with Flow Software. I'm a huge fan now of Google Cloud with, with MDE. There's a, there's a bunch of platforms out there. You know, that Google Cloud with MDE and Looker Studio uses Litmus on the edge, you know, so you get the full stack integration. But the question begs, why is it inductive automation is still the gold standard even today? Even as, They've been the fastest growing platform since 2012, every single year. The number one conversion in the world is Wonderware to Ignition. And it has been since like 2010. And in fact, I have a great story about, you know, Wonderware. Uh, you know, I have a close relationship with my old rep at Wonderware. I'm still friends with him. And, you know, he's told me a lot of the behind the scenes shit at Wonderware in terms of how, mu how much Wonderware freaked out about inductive automation killing their business and how they would come up with these, you know, special discounts to only offer 
to people who were also considering ignition against Wonderwear while they were doing their projects. But the, it begs the question, why is it ignition is still the premier IIoT platform in the world and no one's really competing with them? And the answer is this, it's twofold. Number one, inductive automation is still run by the people who created the company. So Steve, while Steve Heckman has stepped back and retired, the people who run the company are the people who developed the platform. So they are still very close to the original mission and values of the organization. That's number one, okay? And number two, inductive automation has leaned into the fact that it, at its base level, it's as easy a platform as you could possibly ever use. You can get it downloaded and installed in three minutes and you can drag and you can be up and building your first project in within 10 by just dragging tags onto a window, drag and drop, okay? But at its high level, there's nothing you can't build in Ignition. Like literally nothing. All the, I can't tell you the number of applications that I run my businesses with that are built in Ignition, okay? At its base level, it's easy. At its top end, it's as complex as you want to get. Now, there's a downside to that. Obviously, with great power comes great responsibility. There's an easy way to, you know, you could easily, if you don't know what you're doing, you could paint yourself into a corner. But at the end of the day, it's 2000, it's nearly the end of 2024, and Ignition is still the number one IIoT platform in the world. Are there people catching them and gaining ground? Absolutely. What are the issues with Ignition? I would say three problems. Problem number one is premier integrators, you know, it's become a highly political infrastructure. You've got premier integrators that throw around too much weight with the organization. And so you could end up working with an integrator that doesn't necessarily have your best interest at heart. That's a problem. It wasn't like that in the beginning. It's one of the reasons that we were never wanted to be a premier integrator. We never accepted the invitation to become a premier integrator because we believed that it would it would mess up the incentive structure. We wanted our we wanted to answer to the client, not to the vendor. And not that inductive automation is overly crazy with sales targets and that kind of stuff. And but at the end of the day, I wanted to keep the incentives right. So number one, the integrator program is a problem, right? Is it a huge problem? I don't know. Number two, the Python scripting language is getting old and it's based on an old version of Python. And at some point they're gonna to have to upgrade and there's gonna be a lot of people who have technical debt in their Python scripts that they're gonna to have to refactor. And in some cases that could be millions of lines of code. So that's a problem. And then uh, number three is obviously the historian, which I understand they're, they're working on, but those are the issues. I mean, at the end of the day though, from when I first started working with Ignition to now, Ignition is now a platform upon which you could build your entire infrastructure. I mean, you, you literally just using Ignition Gateways, Ignition Edge, and Ignition Gateways, Gateway Area Network over EAM, MQTT, and the Ignition Tags and Web Services, you could literally build your entire digital infrastructure. And that wasn't the case in 2012. All right, so with that, how often do I use Ignition? I'll say this, when I have a solution to solve, a problem to solve, and I wanna build a proof of concept, the very first platform I reach for is Ignition, 99% of the time, still, to this day. I use frameworks an awful lot, um, Tetsoft's frameworks an awful lot. I've been playing with Litmus a lot more lately, and I've been using like Google Cloud a lot more in POC. But to this day, Ignition is still the platform that I, I reach for and I don't suspect that's gonna change uh, anytime soon. So with that, if you're not using Ignition, you should be. You may not need to use it as much as I am, but if you're not using Ignition, you should be. And one of the things I love about what's happening at Prove It in February, Inductive Automation will be at Prove It. They will be kind of showing off what's possible using their platform. And I suspect they're gonna be doing an application that most people wouldn't consider using the platform. So, all right, with that, that's the reason that Inductive Automation's Ignition is still, to this day, the number one IIoT platform in the world. IIoT platform means rapid application development environment that can connect, collect, store, analyze, and visualize, including data operations. All right, like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.